All right, what's going on, guys? Philip Blair, Torch of Christ Ministries, and I want to speak to you tonight about finding the favor of God and really understanding uh, His love for your life. So many people I see are trying to gain the favor of the Lord through good works, through acts of righteousness, through uh, even obedience. But what we don't understand is biblically, if you look Throughout the scriptures from beginning to end, God wants us to have relationship with him. God wants to be our father and us be his child and us to spend time on our face in prayer or to spend time in his word, understanding more of who he is and who we are as his child and to walk in the fullness of of that new revelation that you were a child of God, that you're a saint of God, that you are made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ and through who you are because of who Jesus is. You understand that we have been made righteous and redeemed and brought into reconciliation with the Father through what Jesus did for us. Now, many times throughout life, we find ourselves trying to earn the favor of God uh, through obedience and works of righteousness. Now, these things are important. Obedience as a child of God is very important. We'll always preach how uh, crucial that is. No works of righteousness should be the evidence of our salvation. If we're children of God, as we mature in our faith, we're going to see ourselves uh, doing more for God. And we're going to see the works of the Lord manifested through our life as he lives through us. And our life is a testimony and a shining light to all those who are in darkness. And even within the body of Christ, we're able to, within the role that God has established for us, edify the church and be an encouragement and a source of uplifting for other believers. So it's important that we are uh, obedient to the Lord, that we listen to him, and that works of righteousness do follow us in our life. But none of these things are going to gain you favor with God. I want you to understand, a lot of people will uh, think that I am wrong on this. I want you to pray about it. I want you to read your Bible and look at the scriptural examples all throughout God's word. We see that the favor of the Lord was upon those who sought him who were in the quiet hours of the night seeking him, whether it was Jacob wrestling with the angel of God, wrestling with the Lord and saying, I will not let you go until you bless me. Whether it was Jeremiah at the bottom of the pit crying out to the Lord when he was all alone and seeking after the Lord for the rescuing of his life from this dark pit that he stayed in for a long time. Whether it was Joseph after being sold to slavery, uh, sold into slavery, being uh, falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, thrown into the dungeon, spent years waiting upon the Lord to rescue him and to begin to do something in his life. But yet he still saw the favor of the Lord. Why? Because Joseph had a lot of time to seek after the deeper things of God in those dark moments, in those pits of life. In the valleys, Joseph cried out to the Lord. King David found himself not only once but twice running for his life. Now, David is the pinnacle of who we suggest is a man after God's own heart. He was a leader of leaders. He was a, a, man, a, a man amongst men. You understand? He was the epitome of what a believer is in God's word. And yet he found himself twice running for his life, first by Saul and then by his own son. Um, by his own son, I can't even think of his name off the top of my head, forgive me. I'm thinking Abishai, but that was one of his guys that uh, fought for him. It does, Absalom. Absalom was chasing after him. And you see God preserved him. You saw the favor of the Lord. Even in the midst of difficulty, trial, testing, tribulation, God's favor was still upon his life. But we see David messed up in a myriad of ways. We see David made so many mistakes, whether it was uh, him having someone killed on the battlefield so he could marry his wife, whether it was through him uh, numbering Israel when he wasn't supposed to. We see example after example of David being disobedient, and yet God showed his loyalty to David, his favor upon his life and his family, and the kingdom of God was established through David. 
You understand, an everlasting kingdom was established through David because God's covenants are from everlasting to everlasting. God's covenants are critical. And so we have entered into a covenant with God through our relationship with Jesus Christ because he sacrificed himself, because through his blood we have been redeemed, made whole, made new, and we are a new creation. You are a saint of God, a child of God, more than a conqueror and an overcomer, and the favor of God will manifest in your life when you seek his face. He wants you to seek him in the quiet hours of the night. He wants you to go into the prayer closet. We don't need to put it on Facebook Live. We need to just talk to God, spend more time with the Lord, read his word and understand the depths of his character, understand the depths of his love as he takes you deeper. We all wanna go higher, but God wants us to go deeper. God wants to extend our reach. We all in our flesh are looking for promotion, but God wants to take us into the depths of of who he is. And when we do that, our light will shine. God's light will shine through us. I want you to understand that God wants us to die. He said to take up our cross and to follow him. Well, Jesus went to the top of Calvary and he was crucified on the cross that he carried. In the same way, we are to take our cross to the top of Calvary and to be crucified. It says, I have been crucified with Christ and yet I live, but not I, but Christ who lives in me. So we die to self and we say, God, help me to stop trying to do for you and to instead crucify my flesh Die to self so that you can live through me and that the world can see the testimony of your love through my life, through my words. Help the world hear your voice through my touch. Help the world feel your touch. You understand? Our words should be his words. He speaks through us. He manifests his love through our hands, through our hugs, through the embrace that we give those who are broken and looking for, um, looking for encouragement, looking for something, some source of strength. We are the ambassadors of Christ. We are the hope of the living God. You understand, this is an important revelation that we have to understand as sons and daughters of the King. We have to understand that the favor of God is found in the intimate moments. I remember years ago, I had come back from a trip. I was in prayer. I was on my face before God and I said, Lord, I am so excited to get back out on the streets and to do more for you. And God spoke to me. He rebuked me. He said, Philip, I want you to be, I want you to be out on the streets and be excited to get back in on your face before me so that you can spend time with me. And I was so humbled. I didn't know what to say, but it changed my life. I couldn't forget about it because God seeks the quiet hours of the night. Everything we see manifested in the works of righteousness, in the obedience, all that takes place when we're on our face. The deeper we go with God, the closer we get with God, the obedience becomes easy. The works of righteousness flow forth from us naturally as children of God. He pours into us so that we can go out into the world and pour out from us. We are a vessel of righteousness, an instrument of his righteousness, a drink offering to be poured out upon this, this forsaken world. We are a source of hope because God's hope lives in us. We're a testimony. The Bible says that we have overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. People are falling into hell every day. They need to hear your voice as God speaks through you. Find the favor of the Lord. Spend time with him. Don't ever stop. Jesus is coming back soon. Every soul counts. Jesus has already promised the victory, but we are in a war for souls. I want us to understand the war that we are fighting. It's not with flesh and blood. It's not against people. It's against the forces of darkness that are working in people and against the believers of God. But we've already been promised the victory. We are in a war for souls. And it's the will of God that none should perish. We need to fight for every single soul because every single soul is precious to God. I love you. Share the video.